Welcome, and thanks for being here. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, I will be doing or conducting the uh, questions in English for some of you and in Spanish for others, um, but we'll figure it out. So no worries there. Um, it's going to be a great conversation. I'm going to start asking a question for each, and then we'll open up the conversation for the press as well. Let me start with you, Greg, because uh, the USA, we know, is a two-time defending champion of the final four of the CONCACAF. So what would you say is the most challenging part of defending a title like this one? Well, first of all, um, I think back to the last two tournaments and some amazing games, amazing spectacles. Um, the, the first game in, in Denver, the final against Mexico was a great final. And then last time in Las Vegas against Canada was another great final. And for us, it's really respecting our opponents, respecting the level of competition. Nations League is a fantastic tournament, and there's four high-level teams here. So for us, it's staying humble, focus one game at a time, but really, um, you know, desperately wanting to get our third title. Yeah, and you guys are going through something that Mexico went through, which is um, since you've won it twice, people expect for you to win it again. So if you do win it, as expected, but if you don't, all hell breaks loose. So that kind of pressure, I imagine, isn't, isn't easy to handle, Greg. It's high expectations, but it's something that our group embraces. Um, we have very good players and, you know, we have high expectations for what this program can do, not only in Nations League, but in, in Go Cups, Copa Americas, and eventually in the World Cup. So we welcome that. Coach Halgenson, thank you very much for being here. So Jamaica has been getting closer and closer. You guys have played uh, Gold Cup finals. Um, what does this tournament, Nations, uh, CONCACAF Nations League, and also the Gold Cup mean for you and your team? How valuable are these kinds of competitions for you guys? In, well, terms, think, in terms of growth. Yeah, yeah thanks, for, thanks for having us here. So for, for us, it means, for us national team coaches, it, it means that you have time with the players. Normally, especially here in, in the CONCACAF region, when you have players coming from all over the world, you lose normally one day of training yeah. compared to, for example, when you, when you are playing with a European team, with the European players, everybody is, is ready to train on Monday. So normal FIFA window gives you maybe two trainings in a game and a two trainings in a game. So you basically cannot spend a lot of time with the players. Um, tournaments like these and uh, Copa America in, in the summer gives the coach a month with the players so you can you can grow the team faster you can gel them together and the, and the players will interact better on the pitch staying together knowing each other not only as a football players as but as person so that is really helpful to build a, a team for the future to have have this time so for for us it means a lot to have tournaments like these how close are you do you think of that breakthrough win that Jamaica has been looking for <laughs> Two weeks. <laughs> I like how you think. <laughs> and it was a great comeback, by the way, against Costa Rica. So congratulations, coach. You've been doing an amazing job. Good afternoon. Uh, Felipe Cardas with The Athletics. Questions for Greg. You mentioned respecting opponents and having been in this stage now, two-time defending champions. What have you noticed from this new look Jamaica side? What are some of the strengths that have come about under this new uh, coaching staff? I think very good defensive organization. Um, the ability to counterattack, very good on set pieces. And, you know, I think the most important thing is it's a resilient team. You see, they, they lost in Jamaica to Canada and they had to go away to Canada and, and get the victory. They went down in the game and they still were able to come back and win. So it, it's a very strong mentality. It's a group you can tell the coach has been through major tournaments before, um, very experienced coach, very organized team. So again, for us, it's going to be a difficult match, but we're excited because difficult matches will help us grow. Thank you, Greg. Yeah. Over here, Pedro Silva, Innovation Dallas for Coach Halgrenson. Uh, Coach, if you could talk a little bit about the game in this case for what's going to be United States like as a rival. And also, uh, as far as Copa America in your group, you also have Mexico, Venezuela, and Ecuador. If you could talk about the level of competition of that group as well, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah, first of all, thanks for the question. First of all, um, US and Mexico. Uh, we, of course, if we want to do something, we have to always to face these two powerhouses in, in CONCACAF. So that's that's the ultimate goal to, 
to get as close to them as, as possible. I think we have played more, or I have played more games against Mexico than the US. But hopefully the gap is is getting smaller and smaller in regards to Jamaica close closing the gap uh, to them. So just the importance of, of playing these big matches is it always helps the players to grow. It's one thing to play a match, but when it's a lot in at stake, you know, it gives so much more leverage to to these matches. And the ultimate goal for us is to get to the World Cup in 226. And again, this, these kind of tournaments, these kind of games help us. Um, Copa America, it, I, I think our group is, is quite equal, uh, probably the most equal group. So it's just to be ready on match day for, for those matches. I think all teams have a chance to, to, to qualify from the group. It's, it's not going to be a runaway leader. Uh, or winner, and it's not going to be a team that all the others will beat. So it's just to be ready on on match day, whoever you face. But it's, I think it's it's a physical opponent, so we have we need to be ready for that. Uh, quick, aggressive teams, all the, all our opponents in, in Copa America. So yeah. John Arnold from Getting Concacaf. Just wanted to ask Greg. You mentioned the pressure at a team level of coming in with a favorite tag or defending this title. I wanted to ask about you personally. You know, with the growth of the game in this country, with those trophies, seems to come more and more expectation, more pressure. What have you done to sort of compartmentalize maybe external factors and criticism that that seem maybe stronger around any U.S. team than than any in history because of the interest and passion that fans have now? Yeah, I mean, I think it's great. I think it's great that there's a lot of interest in soccer in America at this time. I think it raises the level. When I look at our group in particular, um, you know, it's it's all part of it. The guys are playing for big clubs, clubs that they have to win every single game. So they're used to that type of pressure. And for us as a group, we know that, um, you know, we want to achieve a lot. And anytime you put yourself out there, and anytime you have really high expectations, um, you know, there comes a lot of pressure and that's just all part of it. We work really hard on um, minimizing that, staying in the present moment and really focusing on game to game and doing the best possible um, game we can each and every time we have the opportunity. Do you feel as a favorite for this tournament, Greg? I mean, do you do you welcome that responsibility or do you not see it that way at all? We have a semifinal that we want to win, and then we have a final that we want to win. It's simple as that. It's not, it doesn't matter who the favorite is. We're all competing for a trophy, and we all want to advance in the semifinals. We all want to win the final. That's for us to discuss, right, in the press. <laughs> for Coach Halgrimson, uh, you know, you, you had your friendly recently with Trinidad and Tobago giving a lot of young players debuts. I'm sure most of the squad will come from the teams that you've been calling in, guys that are based in Europe or other leagues. How do you kind of face the challenge of putting a squad together when you have players from kind of disparate places? You have players that are born in Europe, raised in Europe, developed in those academies, players from the island, some players in the U.S. What's it like to try and meld that together when you're going into a tournament where you have to have your 23 best players on the list? Well, I, th I think it's no different from us or, or the other coaches. Um, you just have to have a clear working environment that you can gel the players in together in a short period of time. Of course, it, it would be better if Jamaica, Jamaica would have um, like better resources than than we have, uh, more finance behind. It's 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 a big difference for for me and and Thomas compared to the other two guys here in 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 regards to the federation, you know, possibilities. So it would be nice to travel and meet the players. It would be nice to to do a lot of things, but we just have to go with what we have and do the best of. From, from what we have so it, it's a gap we need to we need to bridge but I, I think it's the same problem for, for for us like all the other coaches you know you, you just have as a national team coach you have a limited time to 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 assemble a good squad and a good team 